That's how that thing works, man. That's wow. That's quite the quite the setup. That's big. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> we got to go find Eligio so we can corral everyone. We'll round them up and uh, we'll just go over kind of the what's going on in the company and where we're at, how we're doing, and find out what people need, what people want. You know, we try to keep our people happy, but we like to let them know what's going on. But don't make the meeting so long. You would drone on and on sometimes. Just uh -huh. keep it short. Okay, we'll do 15 minutes. How's that? That's it. Quick. All right, we'll do it quickly. <laughs> All right. Let's go find Mr. Eligio. Eligio! We got our camera guy here. Okay. Can you corral everyone? Let's do a meeting real quick, okay? okay. Thank you so much. Where is the other Umberto? I mean, the Jaime. Jaime is in the hospital? Yeah, COVID, right? Yeah. Well, if he's, not, if he's legit in the hospital, let us know. We'll send him over some flowers or something. No, no, no. But I mean, why would you send flowers? I mean, why? Because it's nice. Why would you send food or something? It's like when flowers someone are... dies, you say, oh, I'm sorry. You know, you don't say, oh, like, well, about what I'm time. I'm saying is that it's for death. It's not for your sick. Okay. I would think. All right. He's not dead yet. Please don't send flowers. Okay. All right. Anyway, um, we're selling a lot of newly made furniture. I think you guys have seen a lot more newly made furniture, right? Like vanities. we're selling, yeah, vanities, um, dressers, credenzas, all kinds of stuff. Used to be, all we sold was vintage, right? It's always sold was vintage, you know? So we're starting to move a lot more newly made stuff, which is great. Where we used to, where we used to operate was, you know, we had a lot of vintage sales, you know? And so I would say, you know, 95% of our business was just this vintage furniture thing, which, you know, the lacquered furniture is what, you know, was what everyone was into, right? Yeah. So we had all this, all this vintage stuff. Well, to procure a piece of vintage furniture takes a lot of work, right? And then once you get it in house, then you got our standard set of processes and then you got to deliver that piece of furniture to someone else. There's all kinds of shit that can go wrong in that process. When we have this newly made furniture, um, we have to separate the drawer box from the drawer front. It's very important that everybody does this. Everyone's used to masking it off the drawer box, right? And then we spray it, we paint it, and it's done, okay? But now, if we do that with our newly made furniture, Noel has to clear coat all of these drawer boxes. He's got to clear coat all that stuff. And we spray the back of our drawer fronts now. Anything that's newly made, because it looks nicer, it's higher quality. And anyway, what happens is that paint, it bleeds onto our new wood. Yeah. You know, and then when we clear coat it, we clear coat right over the top of the fucking paint, and we, we just we can't have that, because then we got to go sand it off, and it's just, you know, I mean, so, Make sure those things are separated, okay? You know, and, and Rosa, Daniel, if you guys see that stuff, you know, send it back. Yes. You know, so that we make sure that the people, you know, are, are realizing their mistake and we'll all get on the same page, right? You know, what, what, what we want to do is uh, create our own line of furniture that we can replicate over and over again and somebody can order and we mm -hmm. can deliver it in eight to ten weeks or whatever. This particular cabinet, we built this from scratch but it is a copy of a an, an, uh, vintage piece of furniture. The thing about vintage, yes, it's one of a kind, but sometimes it doesn't work for a designer who's trying to uh, put together a room. So there's vintage always gonna be there, we're gonna sell that, but we wanna make sure that we make new furniture that reflects the vintage. Because a lot of new furniture that you see by designers, um, from, it's very flat. It has no details. So the, the appeal of vintage furniture um, especially now because so much of the furniture is like flat and does not have any dimensions, does not have any layers, is all these pretty details. So with vintage, you will get these beautiful details and layers upon layers upon layers of, of uh, details that you will not get in, you know, especially newly made furniture. For example, look at this um, Henderdon that uh, is probably about 60, 70 years old. And I mean, the details on the leg, um, it's gorgeous, like very um, ornate details on the, on the feet here. Um, look at the number of like layers that the drawer has. What we want to do is add details and beautiful hardware. And so we want to copy some of the vintage elements and then offer that. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants to incorporate that in a project, 
that piece is always available as part of our line. In order to make a piece of furniture like this, you know, you have to be able to copy elements of the original. You know, you have to be able to, like most people don't know how to make this bamboo. You know, it's kind of a trade secret. It's hard, um, but we figured out how to make this. You know, so we're able to take a lot of these elements from the original piece and then we copy them onto what it is that we want to do, right? So these legs, you know, you got to get these legs turned. So we actually go in and we measure. We're trying to figure out exactly why did they choose this particular um, spacing between, between all their legs, you know? So we, we incorporate all those elements and then we team up with other vendors that are really good at what they do. And we have a lot of these things copied, certain elements copied and um, they're great. I mean, they're, they're, they're so good at what they do. But uh, anyway, so yeah, that's kind of what we do when we're, when we're designing furniture. You know, we're gonna look for these cool details, you know, stamped hardware. You know, we've got some nice stamped hardware on this one. Um, this is from a, a, the um, Dixie Aloha, is the, is the um, style of bamboo that they used these handles for. This is your Bally High. You know, these are, they're different. You know, but again, we've taken certain elements from this, we've added it to this, you know, so that's kind of what we do, you know, when we're designing new furniture or we're trying to copy new furniture. So, Resplendent Crow isn't just a painted piece of furniture. Resplendent Crow is a brand that makes its own furniture, that has its own aesthetic, that, you know, has a, the most beautiful lacquered finish in the world. Everything's going great around here. Uh, we're doing a fantastic job. Um, I mean, it seems like things are moving, I mean, as good as they've ever moved. I mean, really, Al and, Bernardo were here this morning. They loaded up the van. They're gone already. Yeah. And what were they gone in? Two hours? Three yeah, hours? Yeah, it was nice. It was a smaller shipment, yeah. so that's good. Yeah. Yeah, but still, it went very smooth, you know. So that's, yeah. I mean, everybody helps to, to do that. So anyway, so that's sales. Um, break room. Yeah, break room, right? So we got the new break room going, right? We tore out part of final assembly, which was the old break room. We moved it upstairs. Um, I want people's feedback on that. You know, what do you like? What do you don't like? Um, I've heard air conditioner so far, so I took measurements. It's 30 by 22 inches. The the um, the unit that we have in there is 26 by 19. So I'm probably going to buy another one of those, mm -hmm. and I'm going to stuff it up there. We got 220 power already, so we're good. Um, yeah, I think it'll work out just fine. Plus that one has heat, you know, so it'll help. It'll heat the new break room. It'll cool the new break room. Should work out pretty slick, you know. So. But again, any feedback people have, please let me know so that we can get that break room good. No um, beer. Nobody's getting beer. Yeah, no beer, unfortunately. <laughs> no beer. Yeah. Okay, Noe? No Modelo. No Modelo. Yeah, no Modelo. <laughs> <laughs> he starts asking about Modelo Monday morning at eight, 9, or 9 o'clock. <laughs> I know. I know. I don't love Modelo. So just for him. He doesn't, he doesn't care about you. <laughs> See that? Cardboard cutout. <laughs> Spend your money. <laughs> it's my mom. <laughs> so she um, she got me into running. She says uh, she says I want to take you out to the nicest run in America. And I didn't run at all. She's like, but you got to train. It's like you have to like the running every day is great. You feel great, but you're doing it because you want to get to that test, right? And that test you can only get at like something you you're not sure if you can complete. You know, it's. Uh, an eight hour event. Can you run continuously for eight hours, right? If not, you got to drop out, you know, and, and no one wants to fail, right? You know, can you do a, a 50 mile run? Can you do a 31 mile run? Like whatever it is, it's, you have to do something that you, you're not sure if you can, you can get there. Once you get there in the middle of that run, you, you have that moment every time where you're just like, you have to make that decision. Like, are you going to keep going or are you going to stop? I run when I go shopping at Neiman Marcus. That's where I do like shopping is my cardio mostly. Um, Saks is a great place to run. Um, West County Mall was amazing the other day when I went to get take Shreya. So yeah, that's how I get my steps in. So I come from a family of like lineage, long lineage of like everybody in my family had a job and everybody had a part-time gig. So if you only work 40 hours in my family, you are considered basically a loser. But it's all internal for me. Like Eric has a lot of external, like he wants to impress yeah, his parents. Yeah, there you go. Um, Eric wants to impress people that he went to high school with and things like that. None of that really is even, doesn't even, it doesn't register. All the people I used to hang out with, like I hope every fucking one of them sees what I'm doing now and this is, oh man, I shouldn't have been such a dick to that person. Or I shouldn't have been so judgmental. You know, and I do, that's how I am. You know, my parents were successful and I've failed so many times 
you know, now that I finally got some success, it feels really good. I love that my parents see that. I want them to see me successful, you know? It's just, it's very important to me. Like, I drove my Lotus to come see you, right? Like, every time I drive that car, I love it. It feels good, it makes me want to do more. Right, and then I think, well, what do I want after that? You know, well, now I want an Audi R8, you know? So I'm, on, I'm already on the next thing. And I said, well, how do I gotta do that? Well, I gotta make more shit, you know? I'm gonna make more stuff, come up with more designs, more products and services that people want, need, and desire, and that's, that's my focus, you know? I, I want this thing to go, I wanna be, you know, huge, and that's just, that's, that's what motivates me every, every freaking day, every day.